Hey what's up everyone hope you are all doing extremely well. In this video I'm going to break down making of this scene in Blender. Well everything starts by studying references. I got this references online which I try to replicate in Blender. So first I start by modeling buildings. I have divided this process in two parts. First I start by modeling the base part of the building. Now since the base part is in the center of the composition I need to give as much detail as possible. For making this interior assets of the grocery store I use image projection technique. For making it first we need to download S5 from its website and install this in your system. Then we need to find the grocery store images online. I usually prefer unsplash.com for this. Find the suitable image and download it. Now load that image in S5. Here you have to map this axis according to the image geometry. Also if the axis aren't visible due to brightened image you can dim the image by checking this box. Over here I want to map the x axis in inward direction and make the z axis perpendicular. So instead of y axis I will turn it into z axis. Then finally click on file, click on export and export it as camera parameter json. Now to import this in Blender, we first need to install the S5 Blender add-on. You can download this from the link given in the description. Then open Blender and under preferences, click on install and search for this add-on and simply install it. Now once the add-on is installed, go to files then go to import and import an S5 file. Once you import it, it will automatically set up camera and create the image as a background for a camera. Under camera settings, if you scroll down, you can also change the opacity of the background image. Now simply add plane and start mimicking the whole geometry. Also to make the background appear in front of the mesh, under the camera settings, you can change the depth to front for the image to appear in the front. While mimicking the geometry of the image, instead of adding different cubes, I always remain in edit mode and just duplicate the plane surfaces. And that helps me to keep my geometry as a single mesh. Once you are done just add a new material, in the base color select the image texture and load the background image we have selected. Now in the edit mode select everything and press U and project it from view. Now the whole image is projected on the geometry. Now you can spend extra time correcting the incorrect UVs by manually unwrapping it. So that's how these small assets were made. Also since I am using Blender 3.0 I can select this mesh and turn them into assets. And now this mesh will be saved as an asset which I can use in my further projects. By using the same process of UV unwrapping, this coke machine has been made. The glass material for the window is basically the mixture of glossy VSDF and transparent VSDF which are mixed together using mix shader. Also I added some stickers kind of thing in the front of the shop and this helps adding more realism to the scene. To make this, simply press shift A and add image as a plane. Select the appropriate image like a barcode. Now since we add image as a plane, under material properties, we need to change the blend mode to opaque as by default it is alpha blend. Also we can turn down the specular to zero or we can simply connect the image output to the specular node. Now under the modifier section, add a shrink wrap modifier and select the target as the glass plane. This will stick our image to the glass. Now using the offset value, we can change the distance in between them. So that's how the stickers are made. I also added some text and give it some depth and extrusion. The material for this is pretty simple. There is a Fresnel node which decides the black and white intensity. The other two inputs are the glass BSDF and the emission. So this give mixture of both the emission and the glossy, giving it neon kind of feel. The selected board is also a cube with an image UV unwrapped over it. For adding wires, you can add Bezier curve. For the thickness, under the curve property, we can give it some depth. For the road, I assign wet kind of texture. For that, first I download the asphalt texture from texturehaven.com. Then under the material, I assign it as a base, roughness and the normal texture getting input from the mapping node. For creating puddles over there, first I add a geometry node and connect the position to the vector of the noise texture. Then the fac output of the noise texture is connected to the color ramp. By varying the values of the color ramp, we can decide the size and distribution of the puddles. Now the base texture output is connected to the multiply node and the fac input over here is from the color ramp which is responsible for the puddles. Now the road surface covered by water looks some kind of grey so that's why the second color is assigned to be grey. The similar arrangement is done for the roughness map also. 
Over here we assign color to as black. Basically black has zero value and that means zero roughness. So wherever the fact input will be black, that point will have zero roughness and will be more reflective. For designing the interior part of the other buildings, instead of modeling everything, I simply added plane and assigned an image texture to them. I also added some food plates at the middle to cover the area. Now for the interior lighting, instead of using point light or area light, I simply use a plane, assign an image texture to it and make it MSA. So now, this image plane is actually responsible for the lightning of the interior. Also we need to make this plane invisible to the camera. So under the object data properties, under ray visibility, uncheck the camera option. And now, under the render view, this won't be visible, but it will affect the environment. I use the same technique for lighting the different parts of the scene as this technique gives me more realistic indirect lightning. I also added some ground assets for populating the scene and instead of modeling them manually, I downloaded them from Quixel Bridge and exported them in Blender. Once we are done with the scene, now we need to add some characters. So for that I use Maxima website by Adobe, just simply went to their website, select the character that you want to animate, then go to animation and select the animation that you want. Click on in place option to make the character move on the same place. Now press download, leave everything to default, only change the frame per second according to your project setting. In my case it is 24 and then simply download it as a fbx file. Now open blender, go to file, import and import fbx. First position the model at its required position. Since the animation we get is for the short period of time, I need to make it cyclic. For that press shift plus e and click on make cyclic. Now the animation will repeat itself for the whole timeline. Now go to the first keyframe, press I, add a location keyframe over there. Then go to the last keyframe, move the character to the final position, again hit I and add one more location keyframe. And now we are done with giving animation to the character. In the similar manner, I populate the scene with bunch of different characters. Also I add one car in the scene and animate it using Riga car add-on. You can check my previous car animation video to know how you can animate the car. After everything is done, I render two outputs. First one is the final image and second one is the MSF pass. In the comp, we have two passes. The first one is the final render and the MSF pass. Since there is no alpha mate in the MSF pass, first using the chroma key node, I just mask out all the black portions in the MSF pass. Then I pass the input to the blur node for adding little bit of blur. After that, I use exposure and brightness contrast node to add some kind of exposure and contrast in the emissive pass. And finally place the emissive pass over the final render using the alpha over node. The output of this alpha over node is finally connected to the lens distortion node adding some little bit of distortion. So finally I render the whole animation and the result turn out to be like this. So that's how I make this scene in Blender. If you want to learn more about making this kind of scene, you can check out this video over here. Finally, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like and subscribe to my channel. That's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.